the finance minister rising to present a speech. Let's listen in. Sure. Honorable Speaker, I present the budget for 2023-2024. This is the first budget in Amrit Khan. This budget hopes to build on the foundation laid in the previous budget and the blueprint drawn for India at 100. We envision a prosperous and inclusive India in which the fruits of development will reach all sections and citizens, especially our youth, women, farmers, OBCs, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. In the 75th year of our independence, the world has recognized the Indian economy as a bright star. Our current year's economic growth is estimated to be at 7%. It is notable that this is the highest among all the major economies. This is in spite of the massive slowdown globally caused by COVID-19 and the war. The Indian economy is therefore on the right track and despite a time of challenges, heading towards a bright future. Today, as Indians stand with their head held high and, their world, and the world appreciates India's achievements and successes, we are sure that elders who had fought for India's independence will, with joy, bless us uh, in our endeavors going forward as well. Our focus on wide-ranging reforms and sound policies implemented through Sabka Prayas, resulting in Jan Bagidari, and targeted support to those in need, helped us perform well in trying times. India's rising global profile is because of the several accomplishments. Unique world-class digital public infrastructure, example, Aadhaar, Coven, and UPI. COVID vaccination drive in unparalleled scale and speed. Proactive role in frontier areas such as achieving the climate-related goals, mission life, and national hydrogen mission. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we ensured that no one goes to bed hungry with a scheme to supply free food grains to over 80 crore persons for 28 months. Continuing our commitment to ensure food and nutritional security, we are implementing from 1st January 2023 a scheme to supply free food grain to all Antyodhya and priority households for the next one year under PM Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana the entire expenditure, the entire expenditure of about 2 lakh crore will be borne by the central government. In these times of global challenges, the G20 presidency gives us a unique opportunity to strengthen India's role in the world economic order. With the theme of Vasudeva Kutumbaka, we are steering an ambitious, people-centric agenda to address global challenges and to facilitate sustainable economic development. The government's efforts since 2014 have ensured for all citizens a better quality of life and life of dignity. The per capita income has more than doubled to 1.97 lakh rupees. In these nine years, the Indian economy has increased in size from being 10th to 5th largest in the world. 
we have significantly improved our position as well as a well-governed and innovative country with a conducive environment for business as, as reflected in several global indices. We have made a significant progress in many sustainable development goals. The economy has become a lot more formalized as reflected in the EPFO membership, more than doubling to 27 crore and rupees 7,400 crore digital payments of 126 lakh crore rupees through UPI in 2022. The efficient implementation of many schemes with universalization of targeted benefits has resulted in inclusive development. Some of the schemes are 11.7 crore household toilets under Swachh Bharat Mission, which is achieved, 9.6 crore LPG connections under Ujwala, 220 crore COVID vaccination of 102 crore people, persons, 47.8 crore PM Jandan bank accounts, insurance cover for 44.6 crore persons under PM Suraksha Bhima and PM Jeevan Jyoti Yojana, and crash tra cash transfer of 2.2 lakh crores of rupees to 11.4 crore to over 11.4 crore farmers under PM Kisan Samman Nidhi. Our vision for the Amritkal includes technology-driven and knowledge-based economy with strong public finances and a robust financial sector. To achieve this, Jan Bhagidari through Sapka Saad Sapka Prayas is essential. The economic agenda for achieving this vision focuses on three things. First, facilitating ample opportunities for citizens, especially the youth, to fulfill their aspirations. Second, providing strong impetus to growth and job creation. And third, strengthening macroeconomic stability. To service these focus areas in our journey to India at 100, we believe that the following four opportunities can be transformative during Amritkal. Economic empowerment of women. Deendayal Antyodhya Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission has achieved remarkable success by mobilizing rural women into 81 lakh self-help groups. We will enable these groups to reach the next stage of economic empowerment through formation of large producer enterprises or collectives with each having several thousand members and managed professionally. They will be helped with raw material supply and for better design, quality, branding, and marketing of their products. Through supporting these policies, they will be enabled to scale up their operations to serve the large consumer markets, as has been the case with the several startups growing into unicorns. <coughs> PM Vishwakarma Kaushal Samman, PM Vikas. For centuries, traditional artisans and craftspeople who work with their hands using tools have brought renown for India. They are generally referred to as Vishwakarma. The art and the handicraft created by them represents the true spirit of Atmanirbhar Bharat. For the first time, a package of assistance for them has been conceptualized. The new scheme will enable them to improve the quality, scale, and reach of their products, integrating them with the MSME value chain. The components of this scheme will include not only financial support, 
but also access to advanced skill training, knowledge of modern digital techniques, and efficient green technologies, brand promotion, linkage with local and global markets, <coughs> digital payments, and social security. This will greatly benefit the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, OBCs, women, and people belonging to the weaker sections. Tourism. The country offers immense attraction for domestic as well as foreign tourists. There is a large potential to be tapped in tourism. The sector holds huge opportunities for jobs and entrepreneurship for youth in particular. Promotion of tourism will be taken up on mission mode with active participation of states, convergence of government programs, and public-private partnerships. Green growth. We are implementing many programs for green fuel, green energy, green farming, green mobility, green buildings, and green equipment, and policies for efficient use of energy across various economic sectors. These green growth efforts help in reducing carbon intensity of the economy and provides for large-scale green job opportunities. Priorities of this budget. The budget adopts the following seven priorities. They, comp they complement each other and act as the Sapta Rishi guiding us through the Amritkal. Inclusive development, reaching the last mile, infrastructure and investment, unleashing the potential, green growth, youth power, and financial sector. I now speak on the priority number one, inclusive development. The government's philosophy of Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas has facilitated inclusive development covering in specific farmers, women, youth, OBCs, scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, divyangjan, and economically weaker sections, and overall priority for the underprivileged, vanchitongko variyata. There has also been a sustained focus on Jammu Kashmir, Ladakh, and the Northeast. This budget builds on those efforts. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture will be built as an open source, open standard, and interoperable public good. This will enable inclusive farmer-centric solutions through relevant information services for crop planning and health, improved access to farm inputs, credit and insurance, help for crop estimation, market intelligence, and support for growth of agri-tech industry and startups. An agricultural an agriculture accelerator fund. An agriculture accelerator fund will be set up to encourage agri startups by young entrepreneurs in rural areas. The fund will aim at bringing innovative and affordable solutions for challenges faced by farmers. It will also bring in modern technologies to transform agricultural practices, increase productivity and profitability. To enhance the productivity of extra long staple cotton, we will adopt a cluster-based and value chain approach through public-private partnerships. This will mean collaboration between farmers, state and industry for input supplies, extension services and market linkages. We will launch an Atmanirbhar clean plant program to boost availability of disease-free quality planting material for high-value horticultural crops at an outlay of 2,200 crores. Global hub for millets. Millets 
which are Sri Anna. India has the forefront. India is at the forefront of popularizing millets, whose consumption further nutri furthers nutrition, food security, and welfare of farmers, said the Honorable Prime Minister. We are the largest producer and second largest exporter of Sri Anna in the world. We grow several types of Sri Anna, <laughs> such as Sri Anna Jowar, Sri Anna Ragi, Sri Anna Bajra, Sri Anna Kutu, Ramdana, Kangni, Kutni, Kutki, Kodo, China, and Sama. These have a number of health benefits and have been an integral part of our food for centuries. I acknowledge with pride the huge service done by small farmers in contributing to the health of fellow citizens by growing these Sri Anna. Now to make India a global hub for Sri Anna, the Indian Institute of Millet Research, ideally Indian Institute of the Sri Anna Research, Hyderabad will be supported as the center of excellence for sharing best practices, research and technologies at the international level. The agricultural credit target will be increased to 20 lakh crores with focus on animal husbandry, dairy and fisheries. We will launch a new sub-scheme for of PM Matsya Sampada Yojana, which is an existing scheme, but we launch a new sub-scheme with targeted investment of 6,000 crores to further enable activities of fishermen, fish vendors, and micro and small entrepreneurs, improve value chain efficiencies, and expand the market. For farmers, especially small and marginal farmers, and other marginalized sections. The government is promoting cooperative-based economic development model. A new Ministry of Cooperation was formed with a mandate to realize the vision of Sahekar Se Samriddhi. To realize this vision, the government has already initiated compu computerization of 63,000 primary agricultural credit societies with an investment of 2,560 crores, 2,516 crores. In consultation with all the stakeholders and the states, model bylaws for PACS were formulated, enabling them to become multi-purpose PACS. A national cooperative database is being prepared for countrywide mapping of cooperative societies. With this backdrop, we will implement a plan to set up massive decentralized storage capacity. This will help farmers store their produce and realize remunerative prices through sale at appropriate times. The government will also facilitate setting up of a large number of multi-purpose cooperative societies, primary fishery societies, and dairy cooperative societies in uncovered panchayat and villages in the next five years. <laughs> Health, education, and skilling. 157 new nursing colleges will be established in co-location in co-location with the existing 157 medical colleges established since 2014. A mission to eliminate sickle cell anemia by 2047 will be launched. It will entail awareness creation, universal screening of seven crore people 
in the age group of 0 to 40 years in affected tribal areas and counseling through collaborative efforts of central ministries and state governments. Facilities in select ICMR labs, Indian Council for Medical Research Labs, will be made available for research by public and private medical college faculty and private sector R&D teams for encouraging collaborative research and innovation. A new pharma program, a new program to promote research and innovation in pharmaceuticals will be taken up through centers of excellence. We shall also encourage industry to invest in research and development in specific priority areas. Dedicated multidisciplinary courses for medical devices will be supported in existing institutions to ensure availability of skilled collaboration with NGOs that work in literacy will also be a part of this initiative to inculcate financial literacy, financial sector regulators and organizations will be encouraged to provide age appropriate reading material to these libraries. I move to priority two, reaching the last mile. Prime Minister Vajpayee's government had formed the Ministry of Tribal Affairs and the Department of Development of Northeast Region to provide a sharper focus to the objective of reaching the last mile. Our government has formed the ministries of Ayush, Fisheries, Animal Husbandry, and Dairying, Skill Development, Jal Shakti, and Cooperation. <laughs> Building on the success of the Aspirational Districts Program, the government has recently launched the Aspirational Blocks Program, covering 500 blocks for saturation of essential government services across multiple domains such as health, nutrition, education, agriculture, water resources, financial inclusion, skill development, and basic infrastructure. <coughs> Manya Speaker, sir, Pradhan Mantri PBTG, which is Primitive Vulnerable Tribal Groups, development mission is being launched. <laughs> to improve socio-economic conditions of the particularly vulnerable tribal groups, the PBTGs as we refer them to, Pradhan Mantri PBTG development mission will be launched. This will saturate PBTG families and habitations with basic facilities such as safe housing, clean drinking water and sanitation, improved access to education, health, nutrition, road and telecom connectivity, and sustainable livelihood opportunities. An amount of 15,000 crores will be made available to implement the mission in the next three years under the development action plan for the scheduled tribes. Ekalavya model residential schools. In the next three years, center will recruit 38,800 teachers and support staff for the 740 Ekalavya model residential schools, which is serving 3.5 lakh tribal students. In the drought-prone central regions of Karnataka, central assistance of 5,300 crore will be given to Upper Badra project to provide, to provide sustainable micro-irrigation and filling up of surface tanks for drinking water. 
PM Awas Yojana. The outlay for PM Awas Yojana is being enhanced by 66% to over 79,000 crores. Bharat shared repository of inscriptions will be set up in a digital epigraphy museum with digi digitization of one lakh ancient inscriptions in the first stage. Support for poor prisoners. The poor, for poor persons, for poor persons who are in prisons and unable to afford the penalty or the bail amount, required financial support will be provided. Priority number three, infrastructure and investment. Investments in infrastructure and productive capacity have a large multiplier of impact on growth and employment. After the subdued period of the pandemic, private investments are growing again. The budget takes the lead once again to ramp up the virtuous cycle of investment and job creation. Honorable Speaker, sir, the capital investment outlay is being increased steeply for the third year in a row by 33% to 10 lakh crores, which would be would be 3.3 percent of GDP. This will almost be three times the outlay made in 2019-20. This substantial increase in recent years is central to the government's efforts to enhance growth potential and job creation, crowd in, crowd in private investments, and provide a cushion against global headwinds. The direct capital investment by the center is complemented by the provision made for creation of capital assets through grants and aids to state. The effective capital expenditure of the center is budgeted at 13.7 lakh crore rupees, which will be 4.5% 4, 4 of GDP. Support to state governments for capital investment. I have decided to continue the 50-year interest-free loan to state governments for one more year to spur investment in infrastructure and to incentivize them for complementary policies actions with a sin significantly enhanced outlay of 1.3 lakh crores. The newly established Infrastructure Finance Secretariat will assist all stakeholders for more private investment in infrastructure, including railways, roads, urban infrastructure, and power, which are predominantly depend on public resources. The harmonized master list of infrastructure will be reviewed by an expert committee for recommending the classification and financing from framework suitable for Amartkal. A capital outlay, I'm talking about railways now, sir, honorable speaker, railways. A capital outlay of 2.40 lakh crores has been provided for the railways. This is the highest ever outlay uh, about, and this, sorry, this highest ever outlay is about nine times the outlay made in 2013-14. 100 critical transport infrastructure projects for last and first mile connectivity for pro ports, coal, steel, fertilizer, and food grain sectors have been identified. They will be taken up on priority with investment of 75,000 crores, including 15,000 crore from private sources. 50 additional airports, heliports, water aerodromes, 
and advanced landing grounds will be revived for improving regional air connectivity. Sustainable cities for tomorrow. States and cities will be encouraged to undertake urban planning, urban planning reforms and actions to transform our cities into sustainable cities of tomorrow. This means efficient use of land resources, adequate resources for urban infrastructure, trans transit-oriented development, enhanced availability and affordability of urban land and opportunities for all. Through property tax governance reforms and ring fencing user charges on urban infrastructure, cities will be incentivized to improve their credit worthiness for municipal bonds. Like the RIDF, an urban infrastructure development fund will be established through use of priority sector lending shortfall. This will be managed by the National Housing Bank and will be used by public agencies to create urban infrastructure in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. States will be encouraged to leverage resources from the grants of the 15th Finance Commission as well as existing schemes to adopt appropriate user charges while accessing the UIDF. We expect to make an available, to make available 10,000 crore rupees per annum for this purpose. All cities and towns will be enabled for 100% mechanical desludging of septic tanks and sewers to transition from manhole to machine hole mode. Enhanced focus will be provided for scientific management of dry and wet waste. Honorable Speaker, sir, our Prime Minister had said, good governance is the key to a nation's progress. Our government is committed to providing a transparent and accountable administration, which works for the betterment and welfare of common citizens. Mission Karma Yogi. Under Mission Karma Yogi, center, states, and the union territories are making and implementing capacity building plans for civil servants. The government has also launched an integrated online training platform, I Got Karma Yogi, to provide continuous learning opportunities for lakhs of government employees to upgrade their skills and facilitate people-centric approach. Sir, for enhancing ease of doing business, more than 39,000 compliances, more than 39,000 compliances have been reduced and more than 3,400 legal provisions have been decriminalized. For furthering the trust-based governance, we have introduced the Jan Vishwas Bill to amend 42 central acts. This budget proposes a series of measures to unleash the potential of our economy. Centers of Excellence for Artificial Intelligence. For realizing the vision of make AI in India, and make AI work for India, three centers of excellence for artificial intelligence will be set up in top educational institutions. Leading industry players will partner in conducting interdisciplinary research, develop cutting edge applications, and scalable problem solutions in the areas of agriculture, health, and sustainable cities. This will galvanize an effective AI ecosystem and nurture quality human resources in the field. 
national data governance policy to unleash innovation and research by startups and academia, a national governance, data governance policy will be brought out. This will enable access to anonymized data. The KYC process will be simplified, adopting a risk-based instant, instead of one-size-fits-all approach. The financial sector regulators will also be encouraged to have a KYC system fully amenable to meet the needs of digital India. One-stop solution for identity and address, address updating. A one-stop solution for reconciliation and updating of identity and address of individuals maintained by various government agencies, regulators and regulated entities will be established using DigiLocker uh, Digi Locker Service and Aadhaar as foundational identity. Speaker Sir, common business identifier for the business establishments required to have a permanent account number the PAN will be used as the common identifier for all digital systems of specified government agencies. This will bring ease of doing business and it will be facilitated through a legal mandate. For obviating the need for separate submission of same information to different government agencies, a system of unified filing process will be set up. <coughs> Such filing of information or return in simplified forms on a common portal will be shared with other agencies as per the filer's choice. Vivaad Se Vishwas 1, relief for MSMEs. In cases of failure by MSMEs, to execute contracts during the COVID period, 95% of the forfeited amount relating to the bid or performance security will be returned to them by government and government undertakings. This will provide, this will provide relief to the MSMEs. Vibhad Se Vishwas 2, Settling contractual disputes. To settle contractual disputes of government and government undertakings, wherein arbitral award is under challenge in a court, a voluntary settlement scheme with standardized terms will be introduced. This will be done by offering graded settlement terms depending on pendency level of the dispute. The state support mission of Niti Aayog will be continued for three years for our collective efforts towards national priorities. Result-based financing to better allocate scarce resources for competing development needs, the financing of select schemes will be changed on a pilot basis from input-based to result based. E courts for efficient administration of justice. Phase three of E courts projects will phase three of the E courts project will be launched with an outlay of seven thousand crores. FinTech services in India have been facilitated by our digital public infrastructure, including Aadhaar. PM Jandan Yojana, Video, KYC, India Stack, and UPI. To enable more fintech innovative services, the scope of documents available in DigiLocker for individuals will be expanded. An entity DigiLocker will be set up for the use by MSMEs, large businesses, and also charitable trusts. This will be towards storing and sharing documents online <coughs> securely whenever needed with various authorities, regulators, banks and other business entities. 5G services. 
100 labs for developing applications using 5G services will be set up in engineering institutions. To realize a new range of opportunities, business models, and employment potential, the labs will cover, among others, applications such as smart classrooms, precision farming, intelligent transport systems, and healthcare applications. Lab-grown diamonds. Lab-grown diamonds is a technology and innovation-driven emerging sector with high employment potential. These environment-friendly diamonds, which have optically and chemically the same properties as natural diamonds, to encourage indigenous production of LGD, lab-grown diamond seeds and machines, and to reduce import dependency, a research and development grant will be provided to one of the IITs for five years. To reduce the cost of production, a proposal to review the custom duty on LGD seeds will be indicated in part B of the speech. I come to the fifth priority, Honorable Speaker, sir, green growth. Honorable Prime Minister has given a vision for life or lifestyle for environment to spur a movement of environmentally conscious lifestyle. India is moving forward firmly for the Panchamrit, the net zero carbon emission by 2070 to usher in green industrial and economic transition. This budget builds on our focus on green growth. The recently launched National Green Hydrogen Mission with an outlay of 19,700 crores will facilitate transition of the economy to low carbon intensity, reduce independence on fossil fuel imports, and make the country assume technology and market leadership in this sunrise sector. Our target is to reach an annual production of 5 MMT by 2030. Energy transition. This budget provides for 35,000 crores for priority capital investment towards energy transition and net zero objectives and energy security by Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. To steer the economy, to steer the economy on sustainable development path, battery energy storage systems with cap capacity of 4,000 MWH will be supported with viability gap funding. A detailed framework for pumped storage projects will also be formulated. Renewable energy evacuation. The interstate transmission system for evacuation and grid integration of 13 gigawatt renewable energy from Ladakh will be constructed with investment of 20,700 crores, including central support of 8,300 crores. Green credit program. For encouraging behavioral change, a green credit program will be notified under the Environment Protection Act. This will incentivize environmentally sustainable and responsive actions by companies, individuals, and local bodies and help mobilize additional resources for such activities. PM Program for Restoration, Awareness, Nourishment, and Amelioration of Mother Earth, PM Pranam, will be launched to incentivize states and union territories to promote alternative fertilizers and balanced use of chemical fertilizers. Go Bardhan scheme, 500 new waste to wealth plants under Go Bardhan 
galvanizing organic bio agro resources dan gobardhan scheme will be established for promoting circular economy these will include 200 compressed biogas plants including 75 plants in urban areas and 300 community or cluster based plants at low at a total investment of 10000 crores i will refer to this in part b also in due course a 5% cbg mandate will be introduced for all organizations marketing natural and biogas for collection of biomass and distribution of bio manure appropriate fiscal support will also be provided bharatiya prakritik kheti bio input resource centers over the next 3 years we will facilitate 1 crore farmers to adopt natural farming for this honorable speaker 10000 bio input resource centers will be set up creating a national level distributed micro fertilizer and pesticide manufacturing network <coughs> mishti <coughs> mishti <coughs> building on building on india's success in afforestation mangrove initiative for shoreline habitats and tangible incomes mishti will be taken up for mangrove plantation along the coastline and on salt pan lands wherever feasible through convergence between manrega campa fund and other sources <laughs> amrit darohar wetlands are vital ecosystems which sustain biological diversity in his latest man ki baat the prime minister said now i quote now the total number of ramsar sites in our country has increased to 75 whereas before 2014 there were only 26 unquote local communities local communities have always been at the forefront of conservation efforts the government will promote their unique conservation values through amrit darohar a scheme that will be implemented over the next 3 years to encourage optimal use of wetlands and enhance biodiversity carbon stock eco tourism opportunities and income generation for local communities coastal shipping coastal shipping will be promoted as a energy efficient and lower cost mode of transport both for passengers and freight through ppp mode with viability gap funding vehicle replacement vehicle replacement is an important continuing policy replacing the old political uh, sorry thank you replacing old polluting vehicles may be applicable right replacing old polluting vehicles is an important part of greening our economy in furtherance of the vehicle scrapping policy mentioned in budget 21 22 i have allocated adequate funds to scrap old vehicles of the central government states will also be supported in replacing old vehicles and old state ambulances <laughs> honorable speaker sir i move to priority 6 youth power to empower our youth and help the amrit pd realize their dreams we have formulated the national education policy which is very wide in its scope but one of the things is also to focus on skilling adopted economic policies that facilitate job creation at scale and have supported business opportunities pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana 
Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana 4.0 will be launched to skill lakhs of youth within the next three years. On-job training, industry partnership and alignment of courses with needs of industry will be emphasized. The scheme will also cover new age courses for industry 4.0 like coding, AI, robotics, mechatronics, IoT, 3D printing, drones and other soft skills. To skill youth for international opportunities, 30 Skill India International Centers will be set up across different states. The digital ecosystem for skilling will be further expanded with the launch of a unified Skill India digital platform for enabling demand-based formal skilling, linking with employers including MSMEs, and facilitating access to entrepreneurship schemes. To provide stipend support to 47 lakh youths in three years, direct benefit transfer under a pan-India national apprenticeship promotion scheme will be rolled out. Tourism. Honorable Speaker, sir, with an integrated and innovative approach, at least 50 destinations will be selected through challenge mode. In addition, in addition to aspects such as physical connectivity, virtual connectivity, tourist guides, high standards for food streets and tourist security, all the relevant aspects would be made available on an app to enhance tourist experience. Every destination would be developed as a complete package. The focus of development of tourism would be on domestic as well as foreign tourists. No, only no. Sector-specific skilling and entrepreneurship development will be dovetailed to achieve the objectives of Deko Apna Desh initiative. This was launched as an appeal by the Honorable Prime Minister to the middle class to prefer domestic tourism over international tourism. The integrated development of theme-based tourist circuits, the Swadesh Dar Darshan scheme, was also launched. Under the vibrant villages program, tourism infrastructure and amenities will be facilitated in border villages. <coughs> Unity Mall. States will be encouraged to set up a Unity Mall in their state capital or most prominent tourism center or the financial capital for promotion and sale of their one district, one product and GI products and other handicraft products and for providing space for such products of all other states as well. Sir, priority number seven, financial sector. Our reforms in the financial sector and innovative use of technology have led to financial inclusion at scale, better and faster service delivery, ease of access to credit and participation in financial markets. This budget proposes to further these measures. Credit guarantee for MSMEs. Last year, I proposed revamping of the credit guarantee scheme for the MSMEs. I am happy to announce that the revamped scheme will take effect from 1st April 2023 through infusion of 9,000 crores in the corpus. This will enable additional collateral free guaranteed credit of 2 lakh crores of rupees. Further, the cost of credit will be reduced by about 1%. A national financial information registry will be set up to serve as the central repository of financial and ancillary information. This will facilitate efficient flow of credit, promote financial inclusion 
and foster financial stability. A new legislative framework will govern this credit public infrastructure and will be designed in consultation with the RBI. To meet the needs of Amritkal and to facilitate optimum regulation in the financial sector, public consultation as necessary and feasible will be brought to the process of regulation making and issuing subsidiary directions. To simplify, to ease and to reduce cost of compliance, financial sector regulators will be requested to carry out a comprehensive review of existing regulations. For this, they will consider suggestions from public and regulated entities. Time limits to decide the application under various regulations will also be laid down. Honorable Speaker, sir, to enhance business activities in gift IFSC, the following measures will be taken. Delegating powers under the SCZ Act to the IFSCA to avoid dual regulation. Setting up a single window IT system for registration and approval of IFSCA, SCZ authorities, GSTN, RBI, SEBI, and IRDAI. Permitting acquisition, permitting acquisition financing by IFSC banking units of foreign banks. Establishing a subsidiary of Exim Bank for trade refinancing. Amending IFSCA Act for statutory provisions for arbitration, ancillary services, and avoiding dual regulation under the SCZ Act, and recognizing offshore derivative instruments as valid contracts. Honorable Speaker, sir, Data Embassy, for countries looking for digital continuity solutions, we will facil facilitate setting up of their data embassies in gift IFSC. Improving governance and investor protection in banking sector. To improve bank governance and enhance investors' protection, certain amendments to the Banking Regulation Act, the Bank Banking Companies Act, and the Reserve Bank of India Act are being proposed. <coughs> Capacity building in securities market. Honorable Sp Speaker, sir, to build capacity of functionaries and professionals in the securities market, SEBI will be empowered to develop, regulate, maintain, and enforce norms and standards for education in the National Institute of Securities Markets and to recognize award of degrees, diplomas, and certificates. A central data processing, a central processing center, a central processing center will be set up for faster response to companies through centralized handling of various forms filed with field officers under the Companies Act. <coughs> Reclaiming of shares and dividends. For investors to reclaim unclaimed shares and unpaid dividends from the Investor Education and Protection Fund Authority with ease, from the Investor Education and Protection Fund Authority with ease, an integrated IT portal will be established. Digital payments continue to find wide acceptance. In 2022, they show an increase of 76% in transaction and 91% in value. Fiscal support for this digital public infrastructure will continue in 2023-2024. Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav, Mahila Samman Bachat Patra. For commemorating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, a one-time new small savings scheme, Mahila Samman Savings Patra or Savings Certificate, Mahila Samman Savings Certificate will be made available for a two-year period up to March 2025. 
This will offer deposit facility up to 2 lakh in the name of a woman or girls for a tenor of 2 years at fixed interest rate of 7.5% with partial withdrawal option. Senior citizens. The maximum deposit limit for senior citizens saving scheme will be enhanced from 15 lakh to 30 lakhs of rupees. The maximum deposit limit for monthly income account scheme will be enhanced from 4.5 lakh to 9 lakh for single account and from 9 lakh to 15 lakh for joint account. Honorable Speaker, sir, fiscal management. 50 years interest-free loan to states. The entire 50-year loan to states has to be spent on capital expenditure within 2023-24. Most of this will be at the discretion of the states, but a part will be conditional on states increasing their actual capital expenditure. Parts of the outlay will also be linked to or allocated for the following purposes. <laughs> Scrapping old garment vehicles, urban planning reforms and actions, financing reforms in urban local bodies to make them credit worthy for municipal bonds, housing for police personnel above or as part of the police station, constructing unity malls, children and adolescent libraries and digital infrastructure and state share of capital expenditure of central schemes. Honorable Speaker, sir, fiscal deficit of states. States will be allowed a fiscal deficit of 3.5% of GSDP, of which 0.5% will be tied to power sector reforms. Revised estimates 2022 to 2023. The revised estimate, Honorable Speaker, sir, of the total receipts other than borrowing is 24.3 lakh crores, of which the net, net tax receipts are 20.9 lakh crores. The revised estimate of the total expenditure is 41.9 lakh crores of rupees of which the capital expenditure is about 7.3 lakh crores. The revised estimate of the fiscal deficit is 6.4% of GDP adhering to the budget estimate. So budget estimates of 2023-24. Coming to 2023-24, the total receipts other than borrowings and the total expenditure are estimated at 27.2 lakh crores and 45 uh, lakh crores respectively. The net tax receipts are estimated at 23.3 lakh crores. The fiscal deficit is estimated to be 5.9% of the GDP. In my budget speech for 21-22, I had announced that we plan to continue the path of fiscal consolidation, reaching a fiscal deficit of below 4.5% by 2025-26 with a fairly steady decline over the period. We have adhered to this path and I reiterate my intention to bring the fiscal deficit below 4.5% of GDP by 2025-26. To finance the fiscal deficit in 2023-24, the net market borrowings from dated securities are estimated at 11.8 lakh crores. The balance financing is expected to come from small savings and other sources. The gross market borrowings are estimated at 15.43 lakh crores of rupees. Honorable Speaker, sir, I now move to part B. Indirect taxes. 
My indirect tax proposals will aim to promote exports, boost domestic manufacturing, enhance domestic value addition, encourage green energy and mobility. A simplified tax structure with fewer tax rates helps in reducing compliance burden and improving tax administration. I propose to reduce the number of basic customs duty rates on goods other than textiles and agriculture from 21 to 13. As a result, there are minor changes in the basic custom duties, <coughs> cesses and surcharges on some items including toys, bicycle, automobiles and naphtha. Green mobility. To avoid cascading of taxes on blended compressed natural gas, I propose to exempt excise duty on GST paid compressed biogas contained in it. To further provide impetus to green mobility, customs duty exemptions is being extended to import of capital goods and machinery required for manufacture of lithium ion ba cells for batteries used in electrical vehicles as well. Electronics. As a result of various initiatives of the government, including phased manufacturing program, mobile phone production in India has increased from 5.8 crore units valid, uh, valued at about 18,900 crore in 2014-15 to 31 crore units valued at 2,75,000 crore in the last financial year. To further deepen domestic value addition in manufacturing of mobile phones, I propose to provide relief to customer, customs duty I propose to provide relief in customs duty on import of certain parts and inputs like camera lens and continue the concessional duty on lithium ion cells for batteries for another year. Similarly, to promote value addition in manufacture of televisions, I propose to reduce the basic customs duty on parts of open cells of TV panels to 2.5 percent. Electrical, to rectify inversion of duty, to rectify inversion of duty structure and encourage manufacturing of electric kitchen chimneys, the basic custom duty on electric kitchen chimney is being increased from 7.5 percent to 15 percent and that on heat coils for these is proposed to be reduced from 20 percent to 15 percent. Chemicals and petrochemicals. Denatured ethyl alcohol is used in chemical industry. I propose to exempt basic customs duty on it. This will also support the ethanol blending program and facilitate an endeavor for energy transition. Basic customs duty is also being reduced on acid grade fluorospar from 5% to 2.5% to make the domestic fluorochemicals industry competitive. Further, the basic customs duty on crude glycerin for use in manufacture of epichlorohydrine is proposed to be reduced from 7.5% to 2.5%. Marine products. In the last financial year, marine products recorded the highest export growth benefiting farmers in the coastal states of the country. To further enhance the export competitiveness of marine products, particularly shrimps, due, duty is being reduced on key inputs for domestic manufacture of shrimp feed. India is a global leader, as I said in part A, in cutting and polishing of natural diamonds, contributing about three-fourths of the global turnover by value. With the depletion of deposits of natural diamonds, the industry is moving towards lab-grown diamonds, and it holds huge promise. To seize this opportunity, I propose to reduce the basic customs duty on seeds used in their manufacture. Custom duties on door or dore and bars of gold and platinum were increased earlier this fiscal. I propose to increase the duties of, on articles made therefrom to enhance the duty differential. I also propose to increase the import duty on silver doors bars 
and articles to align them with that on gold and platinum. To facilitate availability of raw materials for the steel sector, exemptions from basic custom duty on raw materials for manufacture of CRGO steel, ferrous scrap and nickel cathode is being continued. Similarly, the concessional BCD of 2.5% on copper scrap is also being continued to ensure the availability of raw materials for secondary copper producers who are mainly in the MSME sectors. Compounded rubber. The basic custom duty rate on compounded rubber is being increased from 10% to 25% or 30 kg, whichever is lower, at par with that of natural rubber other than latex to curb circumvention of duty. Cigarettes. National Calamity Contingent Duty on Specified Cigarettes was last revised three years ago. This is proposed to be revised upwards by about 16%. Direct taxes. I now come to my direct tax proposals. Honorable Speaker, these proposals aim to maintain continuity and stability of taxation, further simplify and rationalize various provisions to reduce the compliance burden, promote the entrepreneurial spirit, and provide tax relief to citizens. It has been constant endeavor of the Income Tax Department to improve taxpayer services by making compliance easy and smooth. Our taxpayers' portal received a maximum of 72 lakh returns in a day, processed more than 6.5 crore returns this year. Average processing period reduced from 93 days in financial year 13-14 to 16 days only now. And 45% of the returns were processed within 24 hours. We intend to further improve this, roll out the next generation common IT return form for taxpayer convenience and also plan to strengthen the grievance redressal mechanism. MSMEs and professionals. MSMEs are growth engines of our economy. Micro enterprises with turnover up to two crore of rupees and certain professionals with turnover of up to 50 lakh rupees can avail the benefit of presumptive taxation. I propose to provide enhanced limits of three crore and 75 lakh respectively to the taxpayers whose cash receipts are no more than 5%. Whose cash receipts are no more than 5%. Moreover, to support MSMEs in timely receipt of payments, I propose to allow deduction for expenditure incurred on payments made to them only when payment is actually made. Cooperation. Cooperation is a value to be cherished. In realizing our Prime Minister's goal for Sekar Se Samridhi and his resolve to connect the spirit of cooperation with the spirit of Amrit Kal, in addition to the measures proposed in Part A, I have a slew of proposals for the cooperation sector. First, new cooperatives that commence manufacturing activities till 2024, 31st March, shall get the benefit of a lower tax rate of 15%, as is presently available to new manufacturing companies. Secondly, I propose to provide an opportunity to sugar cooperatives to claim payments made to uh, sugarcane farmers for the period prior to the ass assessment year 2016-17 as expenditure. This is expected to provide them a relief of almost 10,000 crores. Thirdly, I am providing a higher limit of 2 lakh per member for cash deposits to loans in cash by primary agricultural cooperative societies and primary, agricultural, primary cooperative agriculture and rural development banks. I repeat that. Thirdly, I am providing a higher limit of 2 lakh per member for cash deposits to and loans in 
cash by primary agricultural cooperative societies and primary cooperative agricultural and rural development banks. Similarly, a higher limit of 3 crore for TDS on cash withdrawal is being provided to cooperative societies. Startups. Entrepreneurship is vital for a country's economic development. We have taken a number of measures for startups and they have borne results. India is now the third largest ecosystem for startups globally and ranks second in innovation quality among middle income countries. I propose to extend the date of incorporation for income tax benefits to startups from 31-3-2023 to 31-3-2024. I further propose to provide the benefit of carry forward of losses on, char on change of shareholding of startups from seven years of incorporation to 10 years. To reduce the pendency of appeals at commissioner level, I propose to deploy about 100 joint commissioners for disposal of small appeals. We shall also be more selective in taking up cases for scrutiny of returns already received this year. Better targeting of tax concessions. For better targeting of tax concessions and exemptions, I propose to cap deduction from capital gains on investment in residential house under Section 54 and Section 54F to 10 crores. Another proposal with similar intent is to limit income tax exemption from proceeds of insurance policies with very high value. Rationalization. Honorable Speaker, sir, there are a number of proposals relating to rationalization and simplification. Income of authorities, boards, and commissions set up by statutes of union or state for the purpose of housing development of cities, towns, and villages, and regulating or reg regulating and developing an activity or matter is proposed to be exempted from income tax. Other me major, major measures in this direction are removing the minimum threshold of 10,000 for TDS and clarifying taxability relating to online gaming not treating conversion of gold into electronic gold receipts and vice versa as capital gains. Reducing the TDS rate from 30% to 20% on taxable portion of EPF withdrawals in non-PAN cases and taxation on income for market-linked debentures. Other major proposals in the finance bill relate to the following. Extension of period of tax benefits to funds relocating to IFSC, Gift City till 31-3-2025. Decriminalization under Section 276A of the Income Tax Act, allowing carry forward of losses on strategic disinvestment, including that of IDBI Bank, and providing EEE status to Agnibir Fund. Personal income tax. Now I come to what everyone is waiting for. <laughs> Personal income tax. I have five major announcements to make in this regard. These primarily benefit a hard working middle class. The first one concerns rebate. Currently, those with income up to 5 lakh do not pay any tax, do not pay any income tax in both old and new regimes. I propose to increase the rebate limit to 7 lakhs in the... I propose to 
to I propose to increase the rebate limit to 7 lakh in the new tax regime. Thus, persons in the new tax regime with income up to 7 lakhs will not have to pay any tax at all. The second proposal relates to middle class individuals. I had introduced in the year 2020 the new personal income tax regime with six income slabs starting from 2.5 lakh. I propose to change the tax structure in this regime by reducing the number of slabs to five and increasing the tax exemption limit to three lakhs. The new tax rates are zero to three lakh, nil. Three to six lakhs, five percent. Six to nine lakhs, 10 percent. 9 to 12 lakh, 15 percent, 12 to 15 lakhs, 20 percent, and above 15 lakhs, 30 percent. This will provide major relief to all taxpayers in the new regime. An individual, an individual with an annual income of 9 lakhs will be required to pay only 45,000 rupees. This is only 5% of his or her income. It is a reduction of 25% on what he or she is required to pay now. That is 60,000. So in the place of 60,000, it is now only 45,000. Similarly, an individual with an income of 15 lakh rupees would be required to pay only 1.5 lakh or 10% of his income or her income a reduction of 20% from the existing liability of 1,87,500 rupees. My third proposal is for the salaried class and the pensioners, including family pensioners, for whom I propose to extend the benefit of standard deduction to the new tax regime. Each salaried person with an income of 15.5 lakh rupees or more will thus stand to benefit by 52,500 rupees. My fourth announcement in personal income tax is regarding the highest tax rate, which in our country is 42.74%. This is among the highest in the world. I propose to reduce the highest surcharge I propose to reduce the highest surcharge rate from 37% to 25% in the new tax regime. This would result, this would result in reduction of the maximum rate, this would result in the reduction of the maximum tax rate to 39%. Lastly, the limit of 3 lakh rupees for tax exemption on leave and cashment on retirement of non-government salaried employees was last fixed in the year 2002 when the highest basic pay in the government was only 30,000 rupees per month. In line with the increase in the government salaries, I am proposing to increase this limit to 25 lakh rupees. <laughs> We are, also making, we are also making the new income tax regime as the default tax regime. However, citizens will continue to have the option to avail the benefit of the old tax regime. Apart from these, I am also making some other changes as given in the annexure. As a result of these proposals, revenue of about 38,000 crore to 37,000 crore in direct taxes and rupees 1,000 crore in indirect taxes will be foregone, while revenue of about 3,000 crore will be additionally mobilized. Thus, the total revenue foregone is about 35,000 crores annually. Honorable Speaker, sir, with these words, I commend the budget to this August House. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.